Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the reasons I think pouring a 40 yard slab like this, that's this size, is really, really easy. So come join the ride, stay tuned, we'll be right back. Hey guys, Mike here. Now my company, Days Concrete Floors, pours all kinds of concrete stuff as you could see in that intro. But one of the things we do a lot of, we probably do a hundred of these a year, is pour concrete slabs for houses, garages, patios, pool decks, you know, all kinds of stuff. This one is going to be for a house. It's got radiant heat. It's eight inches thick. It's about 2,000 square feet. And we got 41 yards of concrete coming today. And I just wanted to talk about a few things why I think this is so easy as far as us pouring it, why it's easy for us. Um, now, one of the first things you'll probably agree with anything you do is experience. I'm lucky enough to, you know, I get a lot of experience myself. I have 42 years of experience. Darren right there in the fluorescent jersey, he's got over 25 years of experience. Uh, Luke, the one in the darker green jersey, has got about 20 years. And Eric, the guy in the white, has, you know, he's got over 20 years of experience. So a lot of experienced guys here pouring concrete. That's a lot of yards and a lot of square footage we poured over the years. So the good thing about having experience is you've pretty much seen it all. Like there's nothing that's going to happen here that we haven't seen uh, that's going to pop up and, and be uh, a problem for us, I guess, if you want to say it. Um, we've seen it all from trucks breaking down to even we've had those shoots, the piston on the chute break um, and having to deal with stuff like that. So we're pretty much prepared for everything. About the only thing that would really be a problem here, let's say, because we got four trucks coming. Let's say one of the trucks on the way to the job broke down on the road and he actually couldn't make it here. That could end up being a problem. So. You know, in that case, we might either have to throw up a, a form and bulkhead this off and just stop it short. Or if they think they can get us another truck from maybe a different plant in time so we won't have like a big cold joint and it won't make the, make the floor look really bad, then we could wait for a, another truck to come. But as far as anything that could happen on the job site, even a little bit of rain, we've been through all that. Now, you can see it's a pretty nice day out today. Um, but sometimes there might be a passing shower that goes by that we have to deal with and we've seen all that stuff so experience experience gives you a lot of confidence and confidence just makes everything go easy doesn't really matter what you do now I want you guys to let me know down in the comments just your feelings on that what you think makes things easy whether it's at your work or doing something like this pouring concrete like we're doing here today so another thing that makes that makes uh, pouring a slab like this easy is the mix. You know, if you know if you know about concrete, you know about mix designs, then you know that you can add some additives in a mix like this that allows you to pour a very strong mix, but also pour it very loose, like we're doing today. You know, a seven-eight slump, and one of those additives is called a water reducer, or sometimes they're called super plasticizers. So you can add or you can ask the concrete batch man to, to put a high range water reducer in your mix and you can pour concrete really, really loose like this. And it doesn't weaken the concrete, it's an additive. We're not using water to make it loose, we're using a chemical additive to make it loose. Uh, now it did rain the night before here so there is some water on the styrofoam we're having to deal with. And You'll see here in a little bit that we'll have a, a little bit of bleed water issues with that with that water on the styrofoam coming up. You know, we tried to, the owner tried to vacuum some of it out before we got here early this morning, but we'll just deal with it. That'll evaporate as we go to power trial, so we won't have to worry about that. But knowing your mix designs, knowing your additives, knowing how to work with concrete, that's going to make pouring a slab like this really, really easy because, as you can see, we... We had to hook on what we call a cold chute or a chute extension. That's a 12 footer. And there's a lot of pulling, and especially when it's eight inches thick, you know, that even makes for more pulling of concrete. So if a, if a yard of concrete weighs two tons, 
then 40 yards of concrete is 80 tons of concrete we're pulling around. And if you want to try to pull around 80 tons of 4 inch slump concrete, then you're going to kill yourselves on a slab like this. So use, it, use some additives, you know, use a super in it, use a water reducer in it, and just pour it looser. That's all. There's nothing wrong with it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to start to stiffen back up probably 40 minutes to 60 minutes from now. It's going to stiffen right back up to the original slump, which is probably like a 2 or a 3. So that's about the amount of working time you've got with something like this. And uh, as far as finishing goes, finishability, you don't even really notice it. It just acts like regular concrete, so it's, it's not a problem to use. They do charge extra for it. We get charged probably... I think it's three or four dollars a yard extra for a high range water reducer. So on a job like this, you know, about another 120 to 160 bucks that allows us to pour it really loose like this. So and, I, and if we're not, you know, maybe we're going to get a, a conveyor truck to do this, which would cost a heck of a lot more than 160 bucks or even a pump truck, which a pump truck cost us fifteen hundred dollars. So. Um, saving a lot of money and again pouring it nice and loose making it really easy it allows each one of us to kind of do something differently meaning you know I can like right now I'm running the shoot Darren's over here he's got the grade stick he's shooting grades Luke's kind of tuning things in and back and Eric's kind of just uh, pulling things out of the shoot kind of roughing things in getting it close to grade so four, four, four guys pouring a 2,000 square foot slab using the water reducer makes it really easy now another thing that makes pouring slabs like this bigger slabs thicker slabs a lot of concrete easy is you know obviously having the right tools you wouldn't want to try to attempt a slab like this without having all the tools necessary to get it down right so you know rubber boots mag floats a bull float like I'm doing right now the the magnesium screeds or the vibrating screeds which you saw a little bit earlier um, and then later on down the road, you know, it doesn't have anything to do with pouring, but you're going to want power trials, you know, steel trials, stuff to finish the concrete, to saw. But laser, having a laser makes it really easy. That's one guy can just do the grades. Um, that's pretty common nowadays, but the self-leveling lasers are a big, big deal. You can see we're jumping on the hand screed now. You can see how easy that is to screed when, it's, when you have slumps like this. And honestly, I can't remember why we switched from the vibrating screed to the hand screed. Probably, probably I didn't I didn't remember to charge the batteries, <laughs> and the battery ran out. That's probably more more likely the reason. But um, one good thing about that is we can all we can all kick screed like this, all four of us. So, and with a slump like this, it makes kick screeding really really easy too. So that really didn't pose much of a problem here today on this. Now another thing that's going to make pouring a slab like this easy is what we find is because we pour concrete every day is having a really good working relationship with the concrete plant and the concrete drivers you know if they're basically part of your team so you work with them a lot if you pour like us every day and them guys kind of knowing just what you want how you want things almost reading your mind knowing what you're going to do next makes makes life a lot easier on any type of job especially ones like this so you know we've got a pretty good crew of concrete drivers here for Haley and they all kind of know what they're doing they've all been doing it a long time so they show up they know they know pretty much know the mix we want unless it's a special type of job um, so they can go ahead and get started mixing they know how to back the trucks up. They know that I want them to pay attention to me when I'm backing them up, and I want them to stop immediately if I tell them to stop. Um, they know how fast or how slow to run it down the chute, depending on what we're doing and how we're doing it. So having a good, really good uh, crew of concrete truck drivers definitely makes pouring concrete a lot easier. And you know, like this guy here, Scott, he's been doing it uh, a long time, over 20 years. So he's seen it all. He's seen the good ones, the bad ones. <laughs> and if he pays attention, right, pay attention, have some common sense, then you can kind of learn from these guys about how they like to do things, almost like you can do it yourself. 
And then the fourth guy there, you can see he, the fourth guy's here already. He's kind of backed in. He's got his truck out of the way. So this third guy can get out. And then he's going to wait before he mixes until we tell him. And then as soon as we get the truck dumped out like we do now, he goes over and he starts mixing. So when we back him up, you know, he's pretty much ready to go and we don't have to wait for him to back up and mix. You can see again, Darren's backing him up. Two guys are screeding and I'm shooting grades. So that's what having a really good slump makes uh, a job like this go really, really easy. So what do you th what do you guys think? Do you think things are going pretty easy now? Do you think that pouring concrete like this is like pouring really loose concrete with a mid-range or a high-range water reducer is uh, something that would make a job easier or harder? Like if you think it's going to make it harder, what in your mind makes you think it would be harder? We're not, and, and again, this is flat. So if we were pouring on a slope, definitely wouldn't pour something this loose on a slope. But pouring it flat. You can see how I'm pushing that around, pulling it around. The aggregate, you know, with it, with it being a chemical, the aggregate doesn't really settle uh, down to the bottom. It all stays it all stays afloat in the mix because that's the way it's designed. So you can see Eric and Luke both screeding right there by themselves now. Going good so far. So there's three trucks. That four truck's going to finish it. We don't have to worry about running out. So we got plenty of mud on a Friday, so... You definitely don't want to run out on a Friday about an hour away from the concrete plant and we know he wouldn't have any balance trucks there for us so we go it's gonna be a good day now another thing for us that I feel like makes things really really easy is when you prep you like when you set up a slab like this setting things to grade having the top to go by like on the outside forms making sure they're nice and flat and level and backfilled or you got a bunch of kickers on there so they don't move so you're not dealing with that during the pour and then you know we like to shoot grades on everything we can in the middle of the slab too whether if especially here where we got a bunch of pipes coming up for plumbing and stuff it's it's makes things so much easier if there's like a pencil mark on them or something or piece of tape on them that shows you where grade is as you're pouring and that really helps as you're pulling the concrete around get it to the right level or at least get it close so you're not too too low or too too high so when when we do our prep we almost on all our slabs will set the tops of the forms of grade unless you know and there's there's ledge under them or rock under them or we can't get them down then we'll snap a chalk line on them but being able to screed off the top of the form like Eric is over there on the right, I mean, that makes that makes screeding a ton easier. Um, and it just makes the whole pour go a little bit faster. So keeping, you know, we definitely don't want to get too much concrete in here. So having everything right to the right to grade makes that part a little bit easier too. And then one last thing is bowl floating. You know, when, when you bowl float really stiff concrete, you gotta go back and forth over the same spot over and over and over again multiple times. When you bowl float concrete with a water reducer like this, it's down and back once and you're done. You've got the surface closed up and you're getting it ready for later on down, you know, maybe an hour from now, two hours from now when you get ready to go power trialing. So there's that bleed water I was telling you about a little bit earlier from the water that was on the styrofoam. Now that's going to dissipate, that's going to evaporate because it's a nice sunny day out today. And then, uh, you know, when we get ready to power trial, we won't have to worry about the bleed water. And just one last thing is we're putting some anchor bolts in here for the builder. He just said, didn't give us any special place, just said stick them in about every four feet. So even with a loose slump like that, you can see you just, you set them down in there and they'll stay right there. So thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.